Hey everybody, welcome back to the Engineered Angler. That's the topic. If you're interested in making lures that cast a long way, stick around. Before you can design a lure that casts a long way, you gotta know what makes a lure cast a long way. We're going to concentrate on the lure itself. There's a lot that goes into getting a long cast. Obviously, your technique, the line you have, on and on and on. Uh, but today, we're just going to talk about the shape of the lure, how you can shape and weight a lure to have it cast a long way, and maybe get a little more accuracy. The biggest factor in casting distance is drag. So wind drag, because you're throwing it through the air. The shape with the least or the lowest coefficient of drag is what some folks call a teardrop or uh, an airstream or a streamline. It has a pointy end going to a blunt end and it would be symmetric about that center line and I didn't exactly draw it symmetric but let's try to get a little more symmetric. So a lot of folks make the mistake of thinking that this thing flies in that direction because it flies pointy end first. That's not true. It's most efficient flying in that direction so fluid flow would be going over the body like so that's the most efficient way to throw this lure so if you're looking at something like this obviously your head would be here here you'd have your eyeball here your tail hook here some belly hook here and then a place to tie it on so you can cast it it looks like a pencil popper this obviously whomever designed this designed it to minimize aerodynamic drag to most of us it's an oddball shape because the head is so small but this lure is going to fly farther everything else being held the same is going to go farther than any other lure most of us shape our lures the other way right here's a typical crankbait and you can see it's teardropped but it's designed to be cast that way. So it flies, it flies tail first, and tail first is the wrong direction or the direction of most drag. But when it gets pulled through the water, it gets pulled through the water in the right direction. So you have this sort of dichotomy. You have this, these two battling dynamics. One, casting it, you want to cast it blunt end first, and retrieving it through the water, you want to retrieve it blunt end first. So it's difficult to really make a lure that does everything right. That's why a topwater lure is much easier to make a long casting lure. It really doesn't matter that much that you're drawing it back in the direction of its least efficiency, right? Now all that said, you can sort of approach this shape without actually having a lure exactly a teardrop so that it will fly a long way and still crank back the way you want it to. Let me show you a lipless crankbait I designed just for that. Okay, here it is. It's a lure I call the flea because it kind of looks like a flea when the hooks are hanging off of it. I wanted a floating lipless crankbait that I could throw a long way and accurately. So that meant it had to have somewhat the shape of a teardrop and you see it right there. You see the teardrop shape in there? So you can see I used the general principle. I designed the shape generally in the shape of a, of a teardrop, not exactly, but I still benefit from that shape and the lack of drag that it has as it flies through the air. So as you're designing your lure, think about how you can shape it to sort of approach a teardrop shape. It doesn't have to be exact, but the closer you get to it, the farther the cast. Now I know what you guys are saying, well, what about weight? Well, weight matters, but but it's a matter of proportion, right? I mean, you can make a big lure that's heavy, but, it, but if it has a high drag, it won't go as far as a lure that has a low drag coefficient, right? I wanted to make a lure that was gonna fly a long way, so that meant I, I needed to have some mass. That plays right into what you folks might be thinking about weight. And I needed it to have a low drag coefficient, so you can see that I approached the shape of a teardrop. It's not exact, but the nose is pointier than the tail. So it flies a long way and it flies straight just like this. 
I can reach way out with this thing without spooking the fish. Um, but I didn't want to have to cast some monstrous big lure, have a giant splashdown, and spook the fish. When you want mass, right, but you don't want a big lure. One of the things that you'll, you might remember from uh, grammar school geometry is that a sphere, that's what that's supposed to be, is that a sphere has most volume per surface area of any shape. So that means that you get a lot of mass and a lot less skin drag. So what I did here is I made a lure with a circular cross section. So that meant I was getting a lot of mass in here. Another thing you'll be considering is that a typical bait fish is shaped like that. But the eye is over here, right? And so that means you're casting it in the wrong direction for minimum drag. So uh, a lure like this, which is a, a little three-piece swim bait, I don't know if you can see that, uh, it has two things going against it. One, it shapes wrong for a long cast, and the other is that it's going to fold. So when you have a lure like this, while it is uh, nicely shaped like a teardrop, it's designed to fly in the wrong direction, right? So what's happening as it's in flight, that it's trying to equalize the forces, right? There's a lot of drag here as, this, as the wind's hitting it. It's wanting to turn this way. Of course, the line is holding it back. So it'll tend to sway or actually set at some angle and fly like that. And that gives it like the least length of flight. So what you want to try to do is weight your lure to the back, if you can, because it pulls the center of gravity in that direction. So the center of momentum is moving this direction and it'll help it keep flying at least that way without too much of this buffering back and forth. Lures like this with a big lip or even a dive lip, right, will tend to hold its direction, but it'll have a lot of drag. Since a shape like this is very blunt at the departure side of the, of the wind or the air, uh, it'll create a lot of vortexes behind it and a lot of drag. So while it'll fly pretty straight in this direction, it'll have a lot of drag and won't go as far as a nicely shaped teardrop lure. So along the lines of uh, moving that weight towards the direction of travel, you can also have a lure that has a big weight shift. So that would mean a large chamber with a pretty heavy weight. I try to include a long chamber with a heavy ball. It gives me a nice heavy rattle and it gives me that weight shift as I cast it. So this lure not only has the right shape, it also has the weight shift in it. Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. Thanks again for all the comments and the interest. Give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. I'll catch you on the next one.